We're going to cover all the ins and outs of the 510 5 shuttle and we're going to start right now. What's up everybody? It's Dave Miller from GarageStrength.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in becoming a better athlete, you want to learn how you can be more explosive, you want to learn how you can run faster, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you become a champion. So when we're talking about the shuttle run, especially when we're talking about the shuttle run, the 5-10-5, if we're talking about the combine for NFL football, for collegiate football, for high school football, for soccer, even now we're starting to see lacrosse, baseball, basketball, a lot of different sports are starting to use the shuttle to test a whole bunch of different facets in sports performance. We're starting to see that coaches are recognizing that, hey, this might be a closed skill, but it's going to show us a couple key elements behind the athlete. We know right away that we're going to have five yards that we're going to move to the left or to the right, depending upon the athlete. We're going to touch at that five yard with our outside hand, and then we're going to turn and sprint as rapidly as possible, driving as quickly as we possibly can. 10 yards and when we break down and get to that final step on that 10 yard path now we're going to cut turn back and run five yards as rapidly as possible run five yards as fast as possible run 10 yards back as quickly as we possibly can and then come back for another five yards and that's going to test a whole bunch of different aspects but what is that what is that what is that actually testing so we know right off the bat we're going to have a static contraction that's going to propel us laterally and because there's a technique involved we want to focus on those first two side driving steps we're going to almost side shuffle as we drive to that five yard line then as we break down we want to get nice and deep we want to create a very steep shin angle we want to generate a lot of force into this very very deep position and now we're going to test how rapidly we can get out of that steep position so we have to have a dynamic contraction after that initial static contraction then we have to have a ton of force absorption when we get into that first turn and then we have to learn how to utilize that force to get out of that now we're entering into essentially a dynamic starting position for a sprint so we've got to come out of that first cut as quickly as possible we've got to be accelerating as rapidly as possible this is very similar to the first five to 10 yards of a 40 yard dash or even a 100 meter dash. We're going to get across and now we're going to repeat it at higher speed. So we're going to have an even steeper shin angle to help us decelerate. Then we're going to repeat that again, get out of the cut and cross. So those key elements here of what are needed is we've got to have good static contractions that explode right off the bat. We've got to be able to have those key dynamic contractions. It's going to test our force absorption. It's going to test our force production out of different cuts. It's going to test even our maximal strength and how we are able to utilize our maximal strength. And then finally, it's going to test our mobility. Because we're getting into these steep angles, our knees, our ankles, our hips, our lower back have to be able to handle those key components. And that's all the elements that are going to be tested. That's a technical coordination. And then finally, how does this transfer to the football field? How does this transfer to lacrosse, to soccer, whatever it might be? We have to recognize that even though this is a closed skill, okay, it's not an open skill like playing football is, it's going to show coaches which side we might have some weaknesses on. It's going to show coaches how well the athlete learns a technique. It's going to show the coaches how well the athlete attacks that test, what their mindset is, how well, how competitive they are, but also how well they can control their deceleration, how well they control their acceleration, and then how quickly they can then decelerate and then back to acceleration so there's a lot of change of direction there's a lot of agility involved and that's going to transfer over really really well to the football field across many different positions so now we're going to head over to the football field we're going to get to the field and we're going to show you exactly how to execute a perfect 510 5 shuttle so we'll start we got we want to straddle the line here in a decent comfortable position we don't want to go too wide we don't want we don't want to be too narrow either and we want to try to as much as we possibly can 
try to cheat a little bit to our right side here if we're starting to head to our right side, okay? So we don't want to be here because they will call us on this. But the key here now is as you come out of the start, it's a side step, step, another side step, and then a little jump cut here. And when we're gonna get to the line, we just wanna lightly swipe right there. And all of our weight is gonna be on that inside leg. So the big key factors, especially with the shuttle, is that if you can execute it with, uh, and, and recognize that it's a technique. So it's gotta be one, two, three, four, cut. And when you're coming out of this first cut here, now we can start to think about, and one of the things here is we're actually on hashes so we can see how linear we are. So we're not gonna be screwing up our steps. We're not gonna be rounding everything. But now as we come out of that cut, now we turn, we got that steep shin angle. We're entering into that acceleration phase, the drive phase in a 40, and we can time it. We can take the, the necessary steps. We can sit here and say, all right, if we can get to this point, and this is our fifth step here, now we got that jump cut here with a six, and now we're back into that finish again, two to three steps, and we should be able to come back across. So it's basically four steps with the cut, five, six on the cut here, and then we're gonna come back here. Hopefully you're back through the line by two, two and a half, sometimes three. But the big key factor is that getting those reps with the exact same steps every single time so you have that good feeling. And then also recognizing like, okay, when we're cutting here, it's gonna feel similar to a Cossack squat. It's gonna feel similar to a single leg squat. And then feeling that position now coming out of the cut where we wanna get to like, all right, now we're in a 40 start. Now we decelerate a little bit, but now we're back into the 40 start over on this cut and we blast through that last five. So Jan's gonna show us a little walkthrough. If you can see that was that was almost perfect and this was through you know this his third step he's like right here. Okay, so that was ideal. It was one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, jump cut was six, and he got out of that really easy. So that's if you can do that over and over and over again and get that feeling, now you're gonna pick up that that cutting capability. And that will help you later on in your game as well. And some of the big part too here is that you've got to stay low. It's the same thing if we're talking about the, the three cone, and the L drill. It's the same thing, even when we're playing on the field, if you stay low, it's gonna be easier to cut. You're gonna have a steeper shin angle. And when you have a steeper shin angle, you can cut easier and you can get out of that cut even faster. So especially right off the bat, it's cross and your hips can stay low, cross your hips stay low, and now this can pivot easier while we're swiping and then that shin angle is going to help us accelerate through that next 10 yards. So that's where Cooper's still taking that extra step. It's mainly I th I think mainly out of the, right out of that cut you're a little bit you're a little sluggish this way and a little sticky on the cut. See there too, your, your first step was more that false step with the right here. And then you, were, you started to drift this way and then especially down here, you're drifting down, you're off that path a little bit here. So you had to take extra two steps. So think about it like right here in the beginning, you did like the false step that Jan was talking about earlier. I, I would say get here and just go with that hip right away. But then make sure, especially coming out of that cut, that you're staying on the hash the whole way across. If you can get those two extra steps out down here, that could be you know two tenths that we're dropping off the time. That was a little. That was a little too many steps. I think one of the key factors too is that we got to recognize that right off the bat, we got to think about staying low so that when you're coming out of it, you're not standing up and opening. It's here cross step low cr drive cross step low and now we get that swipe and your foot's in position to come out of that as cleanly as possible if you're a little bit higher now jan's jan on that last one he wasn't the best coming out of that cut and then that ended up adding two steps so you got to think about it 
if you're if you're going to be coaching yourself, you got to backtrack. Like, okay, why did I take eight steps here versus six? Well, I it's probably because you weren't in the best position coming out of that cut. If you're in a really good position coming out of that cut, you're going to enter into that that drive phase a little bit cleaner, and then that's going to get you to that ten mark a lot easier. Thank you.